Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, the River Walk has been a great place to unwind, exercise, whether that's walking, biking, or running. Plenty of people listen to their own music, but if you run the trail over by Camden Street Riverwalk Bridge, the one with the fish, know that one? You've likely been treated to a little musical talent of San Antonio native. He's Andrew Seeley reports six days a week. Nathan Babiano, currently a UIWF student and private music teacher, takes the bridge and then sometimes the entire Riverwalk, his own personal concert hall. <laughs> From classical to contemporary, Nathan Bibiano's taste in music ranges all over the spectrum, thanks to his aunt, who sparked an interest in metal music when he was a teenager. She introduced me to Corn and Six Feet Under, and then um, as I got older, I got to play with a cool metal band, um, and we actually met with so many metal musicians we grew up listening to when we were kids. I can play uh, multiple instruments, like I can teach a student how to play piano, how to play drums, how to play guitar, bass, uh, viola, cello, like I want to know everything about music, like how to teach it, how to play it, and how to repair instruments. Viviano regularly competes against some of the world's best violinists. He was scheduled to participate in an international music competition in Vienna this summer prior to the coronavirus pandemic. Now he's just trying to stay active with students and fine tune his trills and pizzicados. Ever since a uh, national emergency was declared, lost like four months worth of gigs, not going to do anything major till July, um, won't get to teach anybody face to face for a while. And um, trying to help out my students as best as I can uh, with the whole online teaching, but I'm using that extra free time, um, like practicing in my bedroom or in my apartment. And then like later in the evening, I come here to practice uh, what I've been working on earlier today. In the meantime, he's injecting a little more life to the river walk, one note at a time. And the public is taking notice. I live in the downtown area and I see Nathan consistently playing his violin and he just brings so much joy and life to this area and uh, he's great. He's just like this consistent person who's always just playing his music, smiling at everyone and it's uh, he makes this area really bright. I love when they tell me that I'm an impact of the community. The smile on their faces when I play their favorite songs or whenever my students come here on dates, like they like on Valentine's Day, oh my god, they were such divas. Like they wanted me to be 110% perfect and I told him, dudes, you're planning a date, not a wedding. <laughs> oh, it sounds pretty good though. He takes not... special requests. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Good stuff. to know. <laughs> like that. Hey, there are tons of great goodies today on SA Live. Yeah, and Jen are gonna tell you why if you're looking for a reason to binge on snacks. Today's the day to do it. Grab your favorite snack. It's National Eat What You Want Day. And we're not just indulging in our favorites. We're going to show you where you can find some over-the-top treats all around town and how to make some of your own at home. Get ready for barbecue season, how you can become a pit master and make some of the best brisket you've ever had. We're taking fetch to the next level. We have some creative games that will keep your dog and you healthy, and also you'll have some fun. Cleaning up a dangerous spill. Mike's clever trick will help keep your home safe. If you make a mess, he's got a hack for that. To travel or not to travel, from cancellations to cleaner planes, we're answering your big questions about vacations after quarantine. The best way to stay healthy, a strong immune system. You don't need fancy formulas or pills. The easy things you can do right now to keep your body clean and healthy. A local dog rescue saves a litter of puppies, where they came from and how you can help. A brand new SA Live is just minutes away. And one last look at the forecast. We'll be up around 84 degrees today. Chance of some storms tonight, especially out west. A few of those can make their way to San Antonio by tomorrow morning. 30% chance of rain on your Tuesday. We'll see some pretty warm temperatures through Thursday. More rain chances return Friday into the weekend. Good to see that in the forecast. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Did you see what they brought in? I can smell it. They got popcorn. They got fish, they got Cheetos, they got Oreos and milk. You know, we're going to start. And me standing here. And we're going to have a, a snack day on SA Live. Yeah, it starts right now. Now. Okay, let's social that. <laughs> <laughs> we're gearing up for grilling season. See how you can make some smoked barbacoa and become your own pit master. Plus, play time with your pups. We're showing you some clever games to keep you and your pet fun and active. 
And do you have questions about summer travel? Whether you're already booked a trip or you're hoping to get away, our expert will help make it smooth sailing by clearing up all those questions. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from the KSET 12 studios, this is SA Live. Nom, 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 <laughs> Yes. Hello and happy Monday. Today is National Eat What You Want Day, and we're taking a look back <laughs> at all those yummy treats. Uh, not necessarily we, but David Elder That's all, that's all you try. need. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do. Be on the lookout for places where you can indulge throughout the show. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske, and for Mike today, and, you know, because it's National Eat What You Want Day, that's why we show David Elder, right? Mm -hmm. He does that all the time. This day is awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're pretty excited about it, and we decided to bring some of our own goodies. Fiona, what did you bring over there? Okay, I, if there are Oreos in the house, man, I, I might eat all of them. That's you know, true Everyone weakness. knows to have to hide it from me, so that's my weakness. So, um, Oreos and milk. Um, mm. Now, are, that, you, are you a I quick bought, dipper? Or I only you... got, I, oh no, I like, I like about yeah. halfway, you know, like. Just you know, right before it crumbles. Just enough, just <laughs> enough, you know what? Oh. And that's not easy. It's like when the Goldilocks, right. you're looking for the Goldilocks. Yes. Yes. You know, just right. Deliciousness. Mm -hmm. And my kids know my weakness mm. is goldfish. So I have my goldfish, but every once in a while, I enjoy some hot Cheetos now. They don't do so well with my belly anymore in my older age here, but, uh, the, oh. but I do love them. And of course, popcorn. I was gonna say, you have the trifecta there. <laughs> <laughs> all three. And you know what? They might be good all together, I really. I was just <laughs> thinking that. Put them all yes. in a bowl. Mm, we're on to something. So we want to know, what food is your favorite treat? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll share some of your yummy answers later mm. on in the show. Make them good. Such a good Make day. our mouth water. I know. <laughs> all right, well, we're talking about eating, and we want to know what you want to indulge in, so we have some fun food trivia, right? Yeah, so I was told these questions are hard. <laughs> I know. I so I'm thinking that. whatever I think the answer is, I might go with the opposite, but Fiona right. has the first one. Okay, here we go. Which country consumes and has the most, ooh, dramatic music, and oh, has the most donut shops per capita in the world? United States, Mexico, mm. China, or Canada? Will you have to phone a friend? <laughs> you know, I think it might be the US, but for that reason, I'm gonna go with something that I don't think it is, China. Okay. Oh, oh, Canada. Oh, wow, I really, that really? was, that was uh, way over there. I was not going <laughs> to guess that. Okay. All right, next question. What was the first special Oreo flavor released with the original flavor? Mint, chocolate, lemon meringue, or peanut butter? Mint, chocolate, lemon meringue, or okay. peanut butter. <laughs> okay, so I would think it would be mint. So, maybe peanut butter. Mmm, that sounds good. Uh, what is it? Meringue. What? None of the above that I would I think I would not have thought that either. Okay. okay. They weren't kidding. These, right. are, these are a little difficult. <laughs> Next question. Where were Doritos invented? <laughs> Heaven. <laughs> oh, here we go. Disneyland, a Texas restaurant, a factory, or by a Florida homemaker? Mm, I'm going to go with Florida homemaker. Uh, what is it? Well, makes sense. Happy place. Yeah, the happiest it does make sense. Doritos. That makes sense. You guys are okay. getting me good today. Mm. <laughs> All right, Fiona. What are pop tarts named? Pop tarts named after an art style? The way they pop out of toasters? You would think. Yes, you would. Mm. So don't go with that one. I know. <laughs> A music style. Uh, they were originally made with pop rocks. Okay. So the obvious one is toasters. So no. Um, pop rocks, probably not. Art or music? I'm gonna go with. I don't know. Art. Wow, you totally don't guess. say. <laughs> All right, next question. You got a 50-50 chance. This is pretty good. Good odds. True or false? The man who invented Pringles has had his cremated remains oh my goodness. placed in a Pringles can. True or false? What do you think? False. I hope. I don't know. It could be weird enough to be yeah. true. I don't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> weird enough, right? I knew it. Okay. Weird enough to be true. All right. All right. Well, there you have it. Learn something new today, huh? A lot of things. <laughs> that is the one that I'm going to remember. <laughs> I know. All of those. Never All see right. Pringles the same again. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted some really decadent treats to help you celebrate Eat What You Want Day. So we asked Shane and, Ma and Michelle from You Name It, I Bake It to come up with some sweet mm. and creative creations. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today we're going to be making decadent s'mores cups. All it takes is three ingredients, mini graham cracker crust, peanut butter uh, cups, and mini marshmallows. And so all we need to do is take four peanut butter cups and about a handful of marshmallows for each one. Just enough to cover. You're gonna be left with the most decadent s'mores treat. Oh, look how that is. The second dessert we're going to make is our lemon strawberry tart. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to place is puff pastry in the oven, 425 degrees for 15 minutes. These are the ingredients for the filling. You're gonna need one pint of fresh strawberries, two thirds cup of sugar, one jar of lemon curd, one quarter cup of heavy whipping cream, a quarter cup of strawberry preserves, and an eight ounce brick of cream cheese. So in a mixer, we're gonna go ahead and mix the cream cheese, the sugar, and the whipping cream together. In the sugar, we're gonna add our lemon curd, and we're gonna blend it all together. So we're gonna place the cream cheese, lemon curd, and sugar mixture after it's blended onto the puff pastry. And we're just gonna fill in the well, and then we're gonna to top with strawberries and strawberry jam. Deliciousness, you name it. I Bake It is offering a 20% discount off graduation cakes and you can find them on Facebook. We also have a link to it on our website, salive.com. Click that as seen on SA Live tab. Ooh. Wait. Very, very nice, right? Again? Is that correct? <laughs> No, we're good, we're good. Okay, this is my first time using this. All right, we're sticking with the eating. What do you want theme today? So we're switching from sweet to savory. So who can stay away from barbecue? Oh, right. Jess Priles is a live fire cooking expert. Her cookbook, Hardcore Carnivore, is protein packed with recipes for meat lovers everywhere. She has spent the last 10 years perfecting her passion for meat science. She has over 100,000 followers on Instagram and she's all about spreading her love for barbecue, and she shares her smoked barbacoa recipe. Mm. Beef cheeks are one of the most underrated cuts on the whole animal. They are tender, they're kind of like little mini briskets, and when you smoke them, they have all of that amazing collagen that converts into that ooey gooey delicious gelatin. And they cook quicker than a brisket because they're so small too. So once you can get your hands on them and you can find them at places like Mexican grocery stores, there's just a couple little steps to take to turn them into smoked barbacoa goodness. Check it out. So this is kind of how beef cheeks come. Uh, sometimes you'll find them in smaller, this is about a five pound bag, but it looks pretty gnarly in here. Uh, and that's I think what turns most people off, that they just see all the fat and the muscle and can't really figure it out. So let's open this up and I'll show you how I trim out my beef cheeks. So here's a great example of something that I would take out of the bag and be like, what the actual heck is going on? Um, I use just a paper towel to wipe it off. It just helps keep my board clean and stops the cheek from sliding around. And I'm not gonna lie, this is not the prettiest thing right now. Um, you can see the actual cheek is this part right over here. And then there's a lot of other kind of lip meat and stuff going on. But the most important part to get rid of is there's a lot of silver skin. This one's actually already been trimmed back. That would have originally been attached like this. And that butcher or processor actually already took that off. And you can see all that incredible marbling in the cheek, which is what helps make it taste amazing when it's cooked. But we have to finish getting rid of the rest of this silver skin and the rest of this kind of gnarly fat. I have to tell you, it's all edible. Like there'd be nothing wrong if you wanted to cook it just like this. It's just not the nicest texture. So we'll get it cleaned up. So I'm gonna start by taking the silver skin and fat off here. Like basically just finish the job that they started doing. Also like having a really nice sharp boning knife definitely helps. And you can go in just under that silver skin and push through.
Once your cheeks are trimmed up, it's time to season them. And today I'm using my Hardcore Carnivore Black Seasoning. Now, this stuff is pretty magical because it has activated charcoal in it. So it turns them kind of black and gives them the appearance of bark before they've even hit the smoker. Um, the other thing it has in it is really nice coarse salt and pepper and garlic that will help build that bark that we look for with Texas style barbecue. Place your seasoned beef cheeks into a smoker running between 250 and 275. I love something like oak or mesquite or hickory for this because the great beefy flavor can handle those smoke flavors and cook them for about two and a half hours. After two and a half hours of smoke, take your cheeks out, put them in a foil pan and add about three or four cups of beef broth. You can also throw some orange peel or garlic cloves, any kind of aromatics in there as well. Then seal it with foil and put it back in the smoker for another four to six hours until those cheeks are impossibly tender. And I mean squish apart tender. After they're perfectly tender, take them out, maybe let them cool a little bit, but then you can practically use your fingers to squish them apart into the most incredible, smoky, barbecuey, barky, gelatinous deliciousness that is smoked beef cheeks. Effectively, this is now barbacoa. Slap it on a tortilla, add a little guac. This stuff is rich and smoky and delicious. I promise you once you make it, it's gonna be something you keep making on a regular basis. Stop it, Jess. Just stop mm. it. We are drooling over here. <laughs> Jess Browls has a line of hardcore carnivore seasonings available on her website or Amazon. Just go over to SALive.com. Click that As Seen on SA Live tab for more information. Still ahead on SA Live, we have more home hacks with Mike. He's helping you with some clever ways to clean up a dangerous spill in your home. But first, if your dog tired of sitting on the couch with your pup, you both can have an afternoon of fun with these games that take fetch to a whole new level. It's next. You're watching SA Live. As our lives and schedules change during self-isolation, most of us are spending a lot more time with our dogs than we ever have. While they love the fact that we barely leave them alone these days, it's important to ensure that we are helping them get enough mental stimulation and exercise. Brett Podolsky, co-founder co of The Farmer's Dog, um, are sharing some creative ways to keep your pup healthy and entertained while staying inside. Hey there, Brett. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, this it may be a great time, of course, to teach your dog how to play fetch or other games, whether you're indoors or have access to a yard. And with fetch, all you need is one of his or her favorite toys or tennis ball, right? Absolutely. That's exactly right. What's a great calorie burner game for small spaces? So if you don't have if you don't have space for fetch inside your home, which I'm one of those people, something that I do for because I live in an apartment building. I'll bring my dogs downstairs and then we walk all the way to the top of the building, which for us is only six stories. And then we take the elevator down and we go up again. It's really important that you don't go down the stairs with your dog because uh, it's, it's pretty high impact and you run the risk of hurting their, their elbows and shoulders on their way down. Uh, another game that I really love that's amazing for them and really tires them out is just simply playing tug. Uh, if you have a really strong toy or a rope toy, that's great. You just kind of get them going by getting their prey instinct and what, uh, waving it past their face. As soon as they latch on, start pulling and uh, you can keep going until they're tired. That's a great way for them to release some energy, of course. And what's a way to play a version of hide and go seek with your pet? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work for my dogs because they're just too smart. Um, but yeah, if is, so a really fun way to do that. And it's also a great way to train them how to stay in place, which comes in handy whenever you have somebody come for a delivery or if you have guests come over, you teach them uh, place and then you can go and hide. Uh, definitely have some treats with you and then you could uh, you could yell your release commands and then they'll come searching for you. Um, that's a fun one and me and my wife definitely have been doing that a lot lately since we've been stuck home for the last two or so months with them. Um, I like hiding, you know, a treat from my dog and just watching to see which one of them is going to find it. <laughs> and then I realize uh, neither of them will become police dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, as we plan for ourselves, of course, it's also smart uh, to plan ahead for your dog too. What should you have to properly take care of your dog during self-isolation? Well, I think the most important thing that you could have for them is 
is the right food, healthy diet. I'm a big believer in fresh food, of course. Obviously, I feed my dogs the farmer's dog. Um, another really great way to kind of keep them busy while also not giving them any more calories than they need is filling a like a stuffable toy, like, like a Kong toy, for instance. I'll take my dog's food and I'll stuff it in the toy and then I'll let it freeze. So instead of them having their meal, which for them takes about four seconds, uh, they can enjoy their meal over a long period of time. Sometimes it takes them an hour to get through just their breakfast alone, which is uh, amazing and probably the best hour of their lives for them. All right, and of course, other things to have on your pet preparation checklist. As long as they, as long as they have their toys, I'm also a big believer in having the right dog bed. If you have a big dog, you want to make sure that when you step on their dog bed, if you could feel your heel going into the floor, that's going to be a that's going to be a high pressure point for them. Um, so anytime you have a big dog, definitely want to get a bed that's thick enough. A good memory foam is is really good for keeping their joints nice and healthy. And of course, also good to have an emergency contact, pee pads, and. Cotton of yeah. vaccinations. Yes, Brett Podolsky, co-founder of The Farmer's Dog. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can folks go for more information? You can go to our website, thefarmersdog.com. Thank you so much, Brett. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Adorable. Right? Okay, yeah, those are my dogs. Definitely earning their kibbles and bits that day. I mean, they're giving you the looks right now. All dogs, I think, at home are like, they you know, were, you're they, here. They napped Why all are afternoon you here? after this. <laughs> they, were, they were Denzo Malenzo. All right. Well, of course, for a link to the farmer's dog, we have that on our website, salive.com. So if you have extra room in your home and love in your heart, the Lucky Spot Dog Rescue has 12 puppies. They got they got all 12 puppies all at once, and they are in need of good, uh, uh, of course, of loving homes. Yes. The mother was given up when the owners found out she was pregnant, and now these dozen little cuties need foster and forever homes. They are pit and basset hound mix, so they'll be large-sized dogs, but then most will probably inherit short legs. <laughs> so cute. One has been adopted, so they have just 11 more to go. So if you're interested in fostering, they're hoping to foster two at a time, and they'll provide everything you need to take care of them, including playpins, crates, food, and puppy pads, and even some toys. Well, that's great. And it's, of course, a lot of work taking care of 11 puppies. So they really need your help. If you're interested, go to our website. There's a link to the Lucky Spot Dog Rescue. Just click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Too cute. Cuteness overload still ahead on SA Live. Is it safe to take trips? What do you need to do? Oh, do you need to cancel? We'll have all the answers coming up from an expert. And next, it's time to save some cash and get clearer vision. See the great deal on a simple procedure that will have you saying goodbye to glasses and contacts. That's straight ahead. Now that businesses are reopening, it might be time to think about improving your eyesight. LASIK is easier than ever, so now might be a good time to ditch those glasses and contacts that you constantly have to clean. Manrique Custom Vision has a great deal for you today, and operations manager Richard Doinoff joins us to tell us about it. Hey there, good afternoon. Hey, how are you guys today? As well as we can. Hey, Dr. Manrique <laughs> is an expert and trainer in the LASIK field. Is he still doing procedures? Uh, yeah, we're actually following the uh, orders of the governor, of course, for COVID-19. Uh, we're, we're taking the precautions. Uh, a lot's changed in our office. Um, we've always been very sterile as far as, you know, when patients come in, but now we're keeping the uh, six-foot distance. We have the chair spread out. Um, patients have to wear a mask when they come in. We check their temperature, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, um, yeah, we actually had our uh, first surgery day since this yesterday, and, you know, it went down without without any issues whatsoever. It actually was very smooth and the patients were very comfortable. So when folks want to get a procedure done, how soon can they expect to have it done? Um, we can still usually get them in within a week or two. Um, it, just de it just depends on their background and everything that what they have done. Um, plus, we're you know, again, we are following the rules of making sure that we're not keeping the lobby and everything crowded. So but usually a week or two. What's Menrique Custom Vision doing to make people feel a little safer right now? Again, the precautions we're taking, uh, the staff's wearing masks, masks and gloves. Um, we're making the patients wear masks. Um, everything, as soon as it's touched, is actually sterilized. A lot of people are alarmed about this, but they also know that we are taking the precautions that we need to to make sure nothing happens with them. For folks that have had this procedure done, what is their reaction afterwards? Because, I mean, this has to be completely life-changing for them. 
It's always the same. Um, they always say, why didn't I do it sooner? Um, yesterday, I know for sure we had two or three uh, patients cry after the procedure because they could see so well. But, but you know, the majority of them just said, I wish I had done it sooner. And after the procedures, uh, you know, after the procedure's over, how long before they're, you know, going back to their normal routine? Basically, after a procedure, you see immediately, we just have the patients go home and sleep if they can for four to eight hours. Um, you wake up and you can resume almost everything normal. Um, the only thing that you can't do water activities, uh, the ladies with, uh, there's no eye makeup for seven days, but um, it's all, everything else, usually within the next 24 hours, resumes the normal driving and everything. You know, Manrique has special financing offers and big discounts. What are you offering today? Well, you know, because of COVID-19, we're actually offering some of our best discounts. Um, it's going to be between eighteen dollars to $2,000 off of the procedure, which, you know, we, we find is amazing. Uh, the, the companies are really working with us so people can get LASIK done. Um, we're offering up to 36 months in for free financing, which we had actually last time I talked with y'all, but they extended it through June, I believe. And then we have a secondary financing with people that may be having some issues with their credit. So we're trying to help everybody out, make it as affordable as we can and set the financing in place if they need it. All right, Richard Doinoff, thank you so much. Up to $1,900 off, depending on the prescription. Those are big savings. Just call 210-354-2020 or text LASIK to 45384 for the best discount of the year. You can find more information on Manrique Custom Vision on their website. Just go to sa.manriqueeye.com. Richard, once again, thank you so much. Thank you, guys, and be safe. Still ahead on SA Live, we're starting to venture out, so we're showing you easy ways to stay healthy by boosting your immune system. And next, accidents can happen when you're doing home projects, so cleaning up right is important. Mike has some handyman hacks to make sure your home stays safe. Welcome back to SA Live. Mike has given us a lot of hacks to make life around the house easier. Today, he's giving us one that will make your home safer. So how many times has this happened to you? You've got some really small things, like little tiny tacks, and you spill them. How do you get them all cleaned up and put them back into that container? Well, you can sit there and pick them up, but it's only about two at a time, and that would be really tough if it's maybe down on carpeting or on a rug, something like that. You could vacuum them, but then they're stuck in the vacuum and it's gonna get that all clogged up. Here's a very simple solution. Take a little plastic bag, turn it inside out, and take something, a little magnet. Put that in the plastic bag like that, now all of those little tacks stick to the magnet, right side in, or right side out I should say, and they're all picked up. Simple as that. There may come the need to find the center of a circle. If, for instance, the bottom of this bucket, if you needed to drill the hole right smack in the center, for whatever purpose. Now, this one, obviously, you could just look at the little dot right there. That'd be simple enough. Let's say it didn't have that little dot. Well, you could try and measure and go halfway between, but your measure wouldn't necessarily be exact. You don't know exactly where part of this point is right there. Here's a very simple and very accurate way. Framing square. You can pick these things up at the home center, um, Walmart, something like that. They're not very expensive. All these little simple tools and either use a combination square or a speed square. So this is a perfect 90, this is a 45, and you line up the 45 degree right on the center of the framing square, clamp it in place, and then hold the framing square against the circle, and this is going to be right down the center line. So make a mark right there, and then a couple of more, so you can find out where the lines intersect, and very simple, you have found the exact center point of this circle. All right, 
Well, thank you, Mike, as always. Next on SA Live, travel season is coming up and we have a lot of questions. Is it safe? Are you able to cancel? Our travel expert has answers and hopefully you'll get right on track to have some fun this summer. Stay with us. Well, do you have a summer trip coming up and you're not sure if you're even going to be able to travel or have you already missed out on a vacation? We, of course, are in uncharted territory and a lot of people have a whole lot of questions. Sarah Gavin with Expedia.com is here to help clear up some of the travel chaos questions. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon. All right, first question. I mean, can you even fly right now? Are planes flying? There are some planes flying, uh, but I will say I think a lot of people are just now sort of starting to think about like what does that next trip really look like? Everyone's going to come to travel in their sort of own way, in their own time, uh, when they're ready. Uh, and, and, and I think that that's what we'll sort of start to see. It. And, and at the same time, we'll start to see that the airplanes back up in the skies and the hotels open uh, to match all that. All right, so if somebody's just plain worried and they don't want to take an um, upcoming trip, should they cancel? Will you get a refund? It depends on how far out you you are, right? So one of the big questions we keep getting is, you know, should I should I cancel my trip? Um, and I think you know, if you're a, a week or two out, like the answer is yes, you should cancel your trip. You're not going to be able to go, um, and it wouldn't be wise anyway. Um, and and in those cases, there's a lot that we've put in place with what are called flex policies with our airline and our hotel partners to be able to give you a refund or a voucher depending on you know where you booked and how you booked. Um, and then there's other people who like I have a very good friend who's supposed to go to France for a wedding in July and she was asking me over a Zoom happy hour the other night, like, what should I do? And my answer was like, just sit tight for a few more weeks. You know, you think about how different the world looked a month ago uh, and how different it might look in a month. Uh, and to making decisions about what you're going to do for your, you know, July or August or Thanksgiving plans, um, I think it's, it's a little bit premature. And if you can hang on to that and you think that you may be ready to, to go sort of emotionally, then sit tight. Well, actually, I did that and the airline was, was very accommodating to give me a voucher, but getting in touch with them can be a little bit tough. So what's the best, best way to get in touch with an airline or a hotel? Because sometimes websites can be a little confusing. Yeah. You know, I will say that the sort of rise in call volume for, you know, everyone in the world needing to cancel their travel at the same time. And then, you know, governments around the world shutting down call centers for safety definitely have created this sort of perfect storm for a, a sort of call center hold time nightmare. And what you can do now to manage your trip, cancel, change, any of that, what you can do to manage your trip now uh, online is very different from even what it was a month ago um, and and I think that same thing is true really across across the entire travel industry but there's really really good options for how you can how you can change and cancel online now at those sites okay and very quickly what are airlines and hotels doing to keep people safe I mean, there's a lot. You know, I think in, in this sort of modern connected age, you you have to try to be the cleanest airline or the cleanest hotel uh, to win consumers because otherwise you know, people are going to find out pretty quickly if you're not. So you know, I think like anyone, they're sitting around right now sort of trying to figure out exactly what those plans look like. But you can expect that there will be, you know, far more advances in not just the sort of basic hygiene of how do we keep a plane clean and what are we wiping down more and things like that but you know, I know Alaska Airlines even has their uh, their air filtration system is now one of the cleanest uh, the cleanest types of air that you can have because they're trying to make sure that they're not recirculating air and they've got a great little video on their website to see that but there's a ton of stuff like that that I mean everyone is sitting around right now in their homes trying to figure out how we can innovate to help people get back to traveling and help keep people safe for a long time in the future you know, based on everything we've learned. Sarah, it's great, great uh, advice, great answers to all these questions because we're all just kind of scratching our heads with a lot of this. So Sarah Gavin with Expedia.com, thank you very much for some really good information. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Safe travels. Next on SA Live, one recipe that's easy to make and it will tell you how it can help keep the germs away. Stay right here on SA Live. That's coming up.
Well, the best way to stay healthy right now is to take care of your immune system. And after weeks, the stress might be building, the bad eating habits might be growing. So it's time for a good health boost. Michelle Phillips is a beauty expert, transformation coach, and celebrity makeup artist. And she's here to help give our immune system a good old boost and help us look good while she's at it. Welcome, Michelle. Good afternoon. Thanks, Mike. You are so right. Right now, all of us are under a lot of stress. And what I teach is beauty from the inside out. And the best way to look your best is to feel better. And what I am teaching right now are ways to boost your immune system, starting with drinking a lot of water. And a lot of people, um, you know, in general, don't necessarily like to drink a lot of water, but it's super important to stay hydrated. First of all, it flushes your body of toxins, which is important. It also improves your mood and your brain function. So what I like to do to encourage my family here at home to drink a lot of water is I create what I call spa water. I fill a pitcher up with water every day and I add fresh lemon, which adds some vitamin C, as well as some fresh cucumber. And the taste is so much better and it really encourages you to drink a lot more. About how much water should somebody drink during a day? Well, what I like to do is generally say, just take your weight and cut that in half. And then that's the amount of ounces of water that you should drink per day. And the next thing I like to do is really encourage everybody to, to boost up the amount of fruits and vegetables that you're consuming every day. And for a lot of people, that's kind of difficult. So what I do is I, I make green smoothies every day or sometimes fruit smoothies. And what I do is I take green apple, because green apple is loaded with vitamin C, but it's low in sugar. And then I add some spinach, because spinach is also loaded with vitamin C and antioxidants. And then kale, which um, when you add fruit, you can't taste the kale, because even my kids I love this, so it's not that bad. But kale is one of the most nutrient-dense um, foods on the planet. So this is really, really good to add to your smoothie. And then what you do is you just mix that up, add a little bit of water, and then you've got your green juice. And again, if the green juice kind of turns you off, then make a smoothie with strawberries, blueberries, you know, add some fruits in there to really like give that punch of vitamin C to your daily routine and it will boost your immune system. I know water is good for your skin as well to keep you very hydrated. Does that smoothie also help your skin? Yes, it does. Because really, if you think about it, everything that's going on internally in your body is what shows up externally on your skin. So it's super important to keep your body healthy, hydrated, you know, eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I mean, vitamins are good too, but the fruits and vegetables are actually going to give you more nutrients than the vitamins. And last but not least, I've added a little self-care to the mix because everybody always wants to know, like, what can I do to boost my skin, you know, externally? So I actually created this mask that's oatmeal. It's like one cup of cooked oatmeal, uh, room temperature, and I add a little egg white to it and then a little honey. And what it, uh, you just mix it all together and the honey actually hydrates your skin. The oatmeal soothes your skin and then the egg whites refine your pores. And so you just mix this together create a little mask. You can apply this to your face, avoiding your eye area, kick back, make, make a nice, you know, cup of tea, relax or drink your spa water or your green juice and give your, your skin a boost from the outside too. Just good time to take a little time for yourself, right? And make yourself feel good and look good. Like you said, that's right. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle Phillips, beauty expert. Thank you so very much. Some great tips. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, summer is just around the corner and we're sharing some glamping getaways and they have some good deals for our viewers where you can relax and keep your distance too. And rekindle that romance with a date night at home with a twist. Mike and his wife Bonnie show you a fun way to get creative and make some art. All that and more tomorrow at one right here on SA Live. But now here's a quick look at what happened this week on Texas Eats. 
Joining us here is Alexia Nadler, Operations Manager over here at Nadler's. And thank you so much for having us out here today. I know it's a weird time of the world right now. It's, it's a lot of things going on, a lot of adjustments having to be made, especially by bakeries, delis, restaurants, things like that. Yeah. So how has this experience been for y'all? What adjustments have you had to make? Well, we've had to make quite a bit of adjustments. Um, we're selling things we never sold before. Maybe it'll something we'll keep doing, I don't know. But business has slowed down, but we're still trucking. People are still wanting cakes. And has this impacted you to the point where you've had to do any kind of drastic you know, measures to keep the doors open? We've cut our hours, unfortunately, but at least the days are still there. And uh, we have cut, we haven't cut staffing, we've just reduced hours. Yeah, but we've, we're making casseroles, we're doing um, some D, DIY kits for people to do at home for Easter, birthdays, just because. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So it's made us very creative in a very short amount of time. Since today is National Eat What You Want Day, we wanted to know what food is your favorite treat? And this is from Liz. She says popcorn and sour pickles. Mm, mm. I like it. And Shay says tacos. Yep, can't, can't go wrong with wrong. tacos. Mm, 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 no argument here. Paula says can't go wrong with a homemade <laughs> pizza. Mm, yes. Mm, mm, mm. Diana yeah. says I love cheesecake or key lime pie. Oh, key lime pie. Mm -hmm. Anna says, is that sushi? Oh, oh yeah. Gee, yes. <laughs> John says, every day is eat what you want day. <laughs> Actually, everything Elder eats, David Elder <laughs> is having fun and I'm hungry now. That, that's us every day, yes. you know? <laughs> every time makes us hungry too. So I, 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 did, I, I ate all the Oreos. You weren't kidding. I didn't know we were going to use them again at the end of the show. I told you I can't be around them. I will eat them all. It's it's sad. Hey, it's eat what you want, Dave, it's right? Sad. That's what it's all about. All right, I'm going to eat these here in a second. Hope you tune in tomorrow. We'll be back. <laughs> mm.